Okay, let's go. I'm tired of waiting. And hello, all the lovely 69 people that decided to join me today on this beautiful Thursday afternoon at 8 p.m. Central European time to help me, uh, maybe this is too strong of a word, to release INAF 7. I know why you are here because you cannot... Oh. I know why you are here, because you cannot wait for the INAV7, and well, I will give you what you want. <laughs> that means we will definitely release today the INAV7. So, of course, before we will go into the interesting facts, uh, some less interesting facts, and maybe uh, some updates on the on the schedule on how this thing going to happen, and what's going to happen next, uh, until we have the, finally, the final and the stable release of the INAV7. Uh, today we will be releasing the release candidate one. What is the release candidate one? It's the first version that we as the INAV developers would like to share with you. So that means it's working, uh, at least usually. We think there is nothing really obviously wrong with the RC1. There might, however, be bugs. There might be problems. And this is why we are releasing the release candidate as the unofficial yet final release of the INAV7. So you can familiarize with it and help us to find all those problems and of course to fix them. Is it safe to fly? I'm flying INAV7. I'm flying every development build of INAV I can get my hands on. Uh, maybe not as uh, often as I was flying years ago, but still I'm flying this. I was even flying INAV7 uh, today, first time in uh, uh, two months when I decided to go flying after I burned, <laughs> almost burned my house. Uh, so uh, it's let's say safe uh, there might be problems though uh, but it should be nothing really uh, super super major how long it will take until we will be able to release the final stable release of the inav7 that depends at least one month so really do, do not expect anything uh, happened uh, before Decem december uh, i would not be surprised if we would not release this only end of december maybe early in the 2024 like january like the beginning of the january why? Uh, because there will be release candidate one, there will be most, there will be for sure, I'm pretty sure there will be release candidate two and maybe even release candidate three. All depends on the our ability to find bugs uh, and yours ability to find bugs and our to fix them so that the, the release after all is uh, let's uh, it's stable. I see that Alessandro has a question. Is it compatible with the F405? Yes, F405s are fine. Like f 411s uh -uh. we strongly discourage you from using f 411s but f 405s are uh, let's say absolutely absolutely fine so uh, so that's that um how today's live stream gonna look like uh, first i will show you at least some of the new features that uh, you will be able uh, to use of course we will not be like using them extensively this is like let's say the most important uh, list of the things uh, i will show you what you might expect uh, from those features uh, and uh, then i'm gonna hit the button actually i'm gonna hit two buttons because we're gonna release both the firmware and the inav configurator and to use the inav Seven, you need the INAV configurator 7. So you have to download the, the INAV 7 configurator as well to be able to flash the INAV 7 on your crafts. Airplanes, rovers, tanks, whatever you are using over there. So the, the, this is the baseline. Uh, then um, huge thanks to everyone who helped INAV 7 to be created because uh, I think this is the... Uh, the, the release that we got the biggest number of the new participants in the development flow. Uh, if I will go quickly over here to the release notes, uh, we have really a lot of new contributors. Uh, 31 contributors for the, for the INAV7 release. Uh, so this is no more than 31 because 32 contributors in total and I think uh, new contributors is uh, maybe even slightly longer. So this is like a huge thing. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for everyone to, who participated. I will not say, of course, uh, every single name of every single contributor because that would be take too long. Uh, but special thanks. Uh, I think one more time. This, I think this is honestly, I think uh, this is the second time when the biggest thanks uh, goes to the same guy. Uh, I'm talking about Shota. 
the guy who for the INF6 gave us the fixed uh, artificial horizon and the fact that the artificial horizon in INF is no longer drifting. Uh, this time for the INF7, he gave us the VTOL support, which is like, come on, man, like, wow, um, this is this is fantastic. This is huge. Uh, but of course, not only and um, Luesi, like, of course, Mosca. Oh, thank you guys like a lot of a lot of fantastic stuff uh happened over there so so uh, so thank you thank you thank you very much uh, for for your help and um, enough would not be created if not you uh i think i said it for a few times uh, the development team of INAF is really just people who like to fly and uh, know how to code. So you are just flying and coding and have fun of that. And if not external contributions, uh, the whole project would be developing much, 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 much slower. But thank you. That's that was super cool and uh, highly appreciated, guys. So, OK. Um, I think uh, right now we can quickly go through the uh, major changes in the firmware because we're gonna actually start with the with the firmware because this is uh, this is kind of important. Um, so first of all, few disclaimers: uh, the few things were removed from INAF and they are no longer a thing. You cannot use it, and I know that some people will uh, maybe not cry, but will be disappointed by our decision to get rid of those things. But uh, that's the life, and well, it's 2020. 23, almost 2024. And uh, that means that some things uh, just have to go. One of those things is that NMEA GPS protocol. It's done. It's done. There is not a single good reason to use NMEA protocol. So right now in the INAF configurator, you cannot choose the NMEA protocol anymore. It's only Ublox, Ublox 7, MSP and fake. And that's all. Why? Because right now there is not a single... You cannot really buy GPSs that do not support Ublox protocol. Like those uh, RC hop be great. Everything that you buy and fly is capable of Ublox. If you still own the GPS that is not capable of Ublox protocol, it had to be you had to bo bought it like ten years ago. Uh, maybe it's time really to replace it with something uh, something newer, or maybe even longer. This is why NMEA protocol is gone. Uh, NMEA is slow. There is single single way. There is no way to auto configure, no way to use advanced features. So this is why uh -uh, we are no longer playing this game, and uh, NMEA is no longer available. And get used to that. That's just the reality. Uh, that means that each GPS has to be right now wired with uh, two wires, uh, TX and RX, uh, for uh, this to work. And like that's that's that. The second thing that uh, got removed is the support for the D Free Sky D Series telemetry, not the X4 Air or the X Series Smart Port telemetry, but the old legacy Free Sky. Uh, the series, so for example, D4 Air receiver uh, that had a telemetry, you had to wire this through a separate wire, it was very limited, this thing is gone. You cannot even buy the new D series uh, receivers from FreeSky that supported for years, so like, ah, uh -uh. when I started in the hobby, this was already the, like a deprecated technology. And uh, maybe someone in the tiny whoop community is still using that stuff. But let's be honest, INAF is not really for tiny whoops. So uh, we can just say that, ciao, uh, no more of this, uh, of this thing. Mm. Uh, N8904V, but the Lua telemetry script uh, is coming, it's there, it's working, what do you want, what do you mean by it's coming? You can download this from the INF repository, uh, absolutely no problem. Uh, but let's go. Let's go back to the to the to the topic. And then um, there is a change on how the outputs on the flight controllers are assigned. Previously, it was basically a static list and uh, certain outputs could be used either as the motor, or as the servo, and you could not really easily flip this uh, this usage uh, with the user interface. With INAF7, it's no longer a problem. You can, as freely as it's possible, using the INAF configurator change assignment of the outputs. If we, you go over to the mixer tab because come on you have to go to the mixer tab uh, you will see this additional table with timer outputs timer one timer three four eight if each output on the each motor and servo output on the flight controller has to be assigned to one of the timers 
And that means that all the outputs on these timers have to be used for exactly the same function. So, for example, like uh, on this build I have over here, the first four outputs are assigned to timer 3. And timer 3 can be either servo or motor. You cannot have S1 as motor and S2 as servo. This will just not work. So the four uh, outputs are in the same group. And with the help of timer outputs, you can modify the function assignment for the group. Like, for example, I have right now timer 3 assigned auto, that means the INAV will decide on what to assign to the output depending on the current configuration, current configuration on the mixer. So let me add maybe uh, two servos over here, so we're gonna have two servos. And as you can see right now S5 and S6 are assigned to servos and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, are assigned to motors. This is, what you exp this is what you get by default. However, if we switch our assignment and let's assign timer 3 to the function servos and let's reboot, you will see something interesting. The flight controller has to restart, of course. Mm -hmm. And once it restarted, you see that the outputs for motors were moved to output S5 to S4, while the timer 3 group was assigned to servos, and now you have servos assigned in the beginning. In theory, mm, the output mapping uh, should be exactly the same as it was in uh, INAV6, in theory. However, in case of the Sunflight controllers, there might have been some reassignments and the shifts in the, in the output mapping. That means that before you will fly, remove the propellers and check if, you, if your motors are still connected like they were. If they are not, you do have to make this uh, kind of the change of the assignment, remembering that INAV will just uh, first try to satisfy all the motor needs and then try to satisfy all the uh, servo needs. So first it will find the first timer that is available for uh, for motors, in this case this was timer 4, then uh, two more for timer 8, and then only finally the first uh, line of the timer as available for servos, which is timer uh, 3 in this case. And that's, then that's basically... And that's basically all. Like I mentioned, it should be the same like before, but on some flight controllers and some builds, uh, this can have changed. Not that much, but it still could have changed. So, <laughs> when? <laughs> Once I hit the button. So you still have to give me a few minutes until like, I get through the, through the whole list. Uh, so we have this thing covered. Uh, this will be, of course, in the release notes, so you can read everything. Mixer and the VTOL. This is kind of important thing and this is kind of a big thing uh, because uh, <laughs> like I'm pretty sure majority of you are already aware of that, INAV7 gives us the VTOL support. Uh, what does it mean that it has the VTOL support? Vertical takeoff or landing. Mm, however, the fact that INAF right now supports the VTOL mode doesn't mean it's very smooth and everything is working out of the box. It's not like you chose like a press at VTOL and everything works you do have to make some work to make this happen. Uh, there are two new functions connected with the VTOL functionality, and this is a mixer profile and the VTOL setup. VTOL setup instruction, we will uh, quickly go uh, through it. What is a mixer profile? It's exactly what, is, what it sounds like. Mixer profile is the one you have right now of, on flight controllers that support it, not f 411s You have the option to have two separate completely mixer banks. Mixer bank 1 and mixer bank 2. And on mixer bank 1, for example, you can have the multirotor configuration, while on mixer bank 2 you can have airplane configuration. And if uh, you are building a VTOL, you take off with the mixer configuration, mixer bank when, and then during the flight launch the transition and your uh, UAV converts into the airplane mode. There is a switch between both assignments. Uh, there is a mixer profile uh, over here. So right now we are in the mixer profile one. As you see, we have this assignment. When I will switch to the mixer profile two and restart, this is kind of important. And now you see we have a completely different uh, Mr. Oh, I think. Oh, 
we found the bug. <laughs> we found the bug because there is nothing assigned for the mixer profile one, so uh, there is a problem. But like I said, probably nothing really major. We will fix it. Don't you worry. It looks fine. So that's that. And in the modes, uh, there will be a flight mode. Uh, let me quickly find it. This is called... Uh, Mm, is there one uh, multifunction mixer um, mixer profile two, which basically switches to when active the flight mode mixer profile two will activate the mixer profile two and the mixer transition that allows you to run the transition between those two mixer profiles. So when you are changing the the phases of flight, uh, like I said, everything is in the documentation. There's an instruction on how to work with the mixer profiles, uh, what you have to take a take a take a look at how to, how to make that thing work, and of course there is the separate document on how to set up uh, VTOL in this case a uh, three copter configuration with some examples uh, how it's set up for the forward flight how it's to set up for the three copter mode everything is there and you can uh, go from there building your own VTOL however you want on the INAV discord um, there is the let me quickly find it uh, on the INAV Discord. There is the group over here called the VTOL testing. Uh, if you want to have any kind of support for the VTOL functionality, most probably this is the place to go. So if you're not member of the INAV Discord uh, server, then like go there and there is the VTOL testing group that might help you in case of uh, problems uh, mostly about problems and how to make it better like I said everything is there do you want to do you want to prove that it works <laughs> yeah it works I have uh, Shota by the way uh, gave me links to a few videos of people that already built VTOLs with INAV so all the, we need uh, there is who there is Shota himself um, there is uh, Didano there is PI engineer and uh, I can even like, post some links in the chat for you so you can give some views to the guys so here we're gonna have the VTOL transition mode for the small VTOL okay let's see it's hovering it's hovering in the VTOL mode in the multi-rotor mode and then Still one moment, and it went uh, like the regular airplane, and now it's coming back. So, as you can see, it's a VTOL. Over here, uh, we have a tail sitter, something that Shota himself is working. You see, a tail sitter is sitting on the tail. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also pretty cool. Uh, well, huge thanks, Shota. Why am I not surprised to your channel, by the way? Uh, I should be. Uh, here we have the video from Didano007 with uh, another tricopter support, uh, tricopter example. Uh, this is the Eachin air loader. Uh, we're gonna see how this thing is. You see, it's uh, taking off in the multi-rotor mode. Okay, it's it's getting there slowly. And will we go when will we go? Okay, now we should get we should see the transition to the air mode sooner. No, not yet. And it went into the airplane mode. And you see like went over there. So this is pretty pretty cool. Uh a video from Vital Engineer. PI engineer, sorry. So let me post a link to this thing. Let me post a link to this thing. And of course, let me post a link to this thing. And over here, we have an example of the motor transition in flight. And we had an airplane. Now we have a multi rotor, which is pretty, pretty cool. And we are one more time in the airplane mode. Amazing stuff. Honestly, amazing stuff. And. Uh, if you have the VTOL and you follow the instructions, you should be able to go there and have this thing running however you want. Then, enough of the VTOL. Mm. Well, I don't have a VTOL, so I will not show you too much. Uh, the tile sitter is coming to me, but it will take a moment or two for this thing to arrive. Okay, then. Then we have something called the Easy Tune. Easy tune is, uh, let's say, it's the, hmm, how to say it, it's the equivalent 
not the equivalent. It's a very similar idea for the Betaflight simplified uh, PID tuning with slider tuning. You don't longer use this uh, big table of the PID controllers with 12 no, four, 12 sliders over here, plus setting up all the filters, rates, expos, and mechanics. That's complicated. That's complicated. We don't have to really do that. So this is why you have the easy tuning option, which uh, replaces everything with exactly how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sliders. Exactly eight sliders, but honestly, you do not have to touch this one and this one, so everything is really like six sliders. Um, like I said, IDEA is very similar to the Betaflight slider tuning, but they are not the same. That means you cannot just copy the Betaflight slider tuning settings to this thing and just like have this thing running. Uh, you do have to tune it from the beginning. Mm, when this thing is enabled, then you, for example, what's the difference? You, with this thing, you also set all the filters. You no longer have to worry about certain filters, how they relate to each other and so on. Uh, there is a description telling of where you should more or less uh, start tuning your filters. Like I would be, for example, building a 7-incher. I would go to the main frequency of 90 Hz. This automatically sets the whole cascade of different filters in the background uh, that uh, include matrix filter, uh, Kalman filter, Determ filter, and so on. So you have only this one slider for basically four or five different uh, settings connected only with the filtering. There is axis ratio, which the, the side is on the weight, moment of inertia distribution on your quad. Uh, usually pitch axis has uh, more moment of inertia. Uh, comparing to the roll axis, so that means that the PID gains on the pitch axis should be usually bigger than on the roll one. And so you have the PA equivalent, D equivalent, I equivalent, and the fit forward equivalent. Uh, with, of course, some uh, explanation what is what. And for the, let's say, to make this process slightly simpler, if you would like to know exactly how this translates to your PID gains, when you modify everything, there is a table on the right side that says to you how this thing changes. Most probably, you do not really have to worry about stability and the aggressiveness as well as the expo. And the final touch is that you also tune all the rates with only one uh, slider. Uh, it changes roll pitch and your rates uh, at one go. You do not really have to worry about it. Very important, once you have the easy tune enabled, you do not longer have access to the PID tuning tab. Uh, because in the PID tuning tab, you would be able to override some of the settings, which is not really good. Uh, this is why right now there's a notice that easy tune is enabled. Don't touch it. Don't change it. If you want to change something, use the easy tune. And if you really would like to do the final tuning, after you set something with the easy tune, you can disable this thing, go to the PID tuning, and then configure with the, let's say, do a final adjustments here and there. And I think it's the nice addition, I would have to say, to what we already have with the with the INAF uh, tuning process. There is also a new alignment tool. Right now, the alignment tool allows you to align not only the magnetometer, like it was uh, used before, but also you can align the... Uh, we have this thing over here. And also you can align the flight controller, especially the arrow orientation on how this thing is oriented comparing to the default. So you have just those sliders, roll, pitch, however you want. And the INAV will automatically co convert this to the... Uh, required values for the magnetometer and for the flight controller. So uh, hopefully this will simplify this and that. And let's be honest, the process of setting the current orientation on the magnetometer and on the flight controller was always kind of tedious and like prone to errors, especially because the magnetometer orientation depends on the flight controller orientation. This was irritating, but with this one uh, nice tool, you have basically everything at once. You just make this thing 
like so that the, it covers it covers the reality uh, it's analog to the reality of how you have the flight controller and the <laughs> magnetometer in this even in this crazy super configuration you just uh, click save and reboot and you are done everything is there so super nice super fantastic there was only a lot of changes for the x-plane uh, simulator by the way the list is uh, somewhere in the release notes a lot of changes for this thing and you should be really 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 happy now the users of two flight controllers, by the way, very popular flight controllers, will be kind of happy because INAV7 finally solves the problem of uh, D-Shot not working. This was uh, especially affecting the Matag F405 TE, third edition flight controllers, and the SpeedyB F405 V3. D-Shot is right now available on those flight controllers. Everything is working like that. And also, uh, guys uh, were able to fix quite a lot of the problems with the F405 V3. Uh, because uh, on this board, the OSD and the SD card is on the, on the same SPI bath. It was creating like problems on the initialization. Uh, right now, uh, it, all, all those problems were resolved and everything works with the SpeedyB uh, F405 V3 like it should be working from the very beginning, which is super cool. And that, that, oh, uh, yet the Xbus users will be super happy. <laughs> <laughs> the flight controller should no longer hang after like 40 minutes. <laughs> Uh, so, so that's that's kind of nice. By the way, thank you very much, uh, Steve C. Evans and uh, Kiltop One Two Three from the Beta Flight for identifying this problem and finally fixing this. Uh, Turned out it was not really related to the version of the GCC, uh, but uh, it was just a problem with the telemetry frame uh, overriding some memory regions and in general, like creating a havoc on the flight controller now it should be fine it should be working so this is actually uh, quite quite nice mm, so that's that uh, multi-rotor cruise mode mm, you just release the sticks like two weeks ago i released the video about how this thing works uh, the link will be in the description so release the sticks you just enable this thing it works uh, kind of similar to the position hold you just make it fly release the pitch stick and it like continues flying how it was flying from the very beginning and like go far 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 and beyond and then do something with your drone whatever you want um something i mentioned already uh the map protocol is gone we are not longer playing with uh with this thing uh it's time to to go and uh mosca you are here so uh thank you very much uh, mosca made a lot of uh, changes for the gps we have a lot of changes for the gps including uh, fast updates rates on the ublock 7 a uh, new uh, how what's they called uh, support for the new constellations Beidou and uh, glonas uh, not only galileo the, the gps framework was basically quite extensively reworked by mosca and now we should be getting uh, much nicer uh, nicer results out of that of course um, you do not have to enable everything in every every, every time because the, for example when you are in Europe then uh, the chances that you will be getting a lot of coverage from the Beidou satellites is rather slim not impossible but rather slim uh, but this is something that uh, absolutely is, is is possible right now. Oh, one more time, it's about you, Mosca. Uh, MSP VTX, so HD0, you can right now change channels, power, and so on uh, for your uh, HD0 VTX uh, using INAV and the MSP functionality, MSP VTX support. So that's great. Linear Descent RTH mode, uh, better support for the Descent uh, during the return to home uh, now you can upload yourself a pilot logos and put it on your analog osd and uh, not on the digital ones uh, because then uh, the fonts uh, live in the uh, on the goggles not on the on the on the on the flight controller on the osd chipset but for the analog you can 100 uh, percent uh, upload this thing uh, auto level was uh, renamed the change on the use precision for the osd elements uh, 24 channels for yeti system like you need if you really need 24 rc channels woohoo 
Uh, you have it virtual pitot enabled by default. A uh, few things were removed, uh, but we already mentioned that the free sky telemetry is like gone. Uh, we are no longer playing this game and the output mode is also gone because the functionality we covered uh, before. By the, by the way, man, Mosca, this is also thanks to you. So kudos for that. Uh, because this thing, uh, user interface, basically takes over the uh, functionality of the output mode, but the, with the granularity of the mixer, not really of the of the output. Uh, we have a few new targets: uh, SD model H7 V1, Matic H7 43 HD, SpeedyB F405 V4. Uh, okay, it's the new F405 Mini, SpeedyB F7 Mini V2, two flight controllers from Gap RC, F405 and S75, and also the Neutron RC F435 Mini All in One. So the least uh, is growing. Mm, the list of other changes uh, and so on, but we will not be really going into the uh, hundred percent details. And I think we, I think actually, I'm missing some uh, elements of the release notes. Something is missing, guys. I have no idea, but I have a feeling something is missing. Yes, the list was much longer. Uh, full list of the of the changes and of course new contributors. Fantastic! Thank you, guys. You're amazing. Uh, if not you, then, well, we would not have the INAF7 for sure. Okie dokie. So, should I press the button? I would like to see you wanting me to press the button to release this thing. Like, I don't know. I would like to see 100 likes on this live stream right now. When I see 100 on topics on the likes, right now we have 86, I will push the button and we're going to release this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I can. So, almost there. On by, also, by the way, uh, we have slightly updated logo. Like, slightly updated. The, the bird is now on the left, and the name of the uh, INAF7 is the Ferocious Falcon. Yeah, there were like vertical vo vertical Vulcan, but Vulcan is not really the name of the bird. There were quite a lot of ideas, but at one point I decided, ah, Ferocious Falcon looks kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> and sounds kind of cool. So we have the Ferocious Falcon and we have 117 likes. I have absolutely no choice just to hit the button. Uh, by the way, uh, final final notes on this thing. Uh, we have for the INAF... Oh, for the INAF configurator, I pressed the wrong button and I switched to the wrong, <laughs> wrong screen, the one that doesn't exist. Uh, we have built versions for the Linux and also for the uh, Mac OS. There are no executables yet, at least for the Windows. We have Windows 64, Windows 32, Mac OS in the zip and DMG format, and as well tar, uh, tar bars for the Linux 64 and Linux 32. Is anyone still using Linux 32? Eee, that's kind of strange. So that's that. Mm, when I will press the button, by the way, uh, the configurator will not get the you will not be informed in the configurator that there is a new version of the configurator because we release this thing as the pre-release. Uh, that means there will be no uh, no flag anywhere saying that uh, you have it. Uh, however, however, to download everything, you will of course have to go to the release page of the INAF configurator, get the new configurator and of course uh, start playing. And uh, firmware just went online. And now let's do the same with the INAF configurator. Uh, one, one more time. You do have to get both the configurator and the firmware to be able to use the INAF 7. You cannot use INAF configurator 6 to connect to the INAF 7 uh, firmware. There is a lock that prohibits from that, and this is a good thing that we have this thing. And also, uh, once you update to the INAF configurator 7, you will not be able to connect to the INAF 6 firmware. But you can have two configurators on your drive, just with two folders. INAF configurator 6, INAF configurator 7, and you launch wherever you want. I'm not sure you can have two running at the same time, but I think I know where you are going uh, with this. Iceman FPV, no, there is no uh, Android version. 
Um, I, I know that it can be done, but right now we have no resources to do it. Uh, by the way, in the future, we will also release the uh, iNav Black Box Explorer 7, uh, which adds a uh, a few new features. A huge thanks to a UAV tech. By the way, if you don't know the UAV tech, uh, he's the guy on the YouTube uh, that usually is doing beta flight. But but he's in INAF now. <laughs> he's doing INAF. <laughs> UAV tech. Uh, Mark uh, made a few nice updates to the Black Box Explorer for INAV uh, that should uh, make the process of tuning slightly simpler because a few things were just like, let's say, fixed and uh, it's right now just better. So if you're not uh, subscribers of Mark's channel, no, maybe it's a good thing. Although Mark is not really flying yet with the fixed wings, uh, but maybe he will soon and then he will be fully converted to to INAF. So, like I mentioned, the INAF 7 release candidate 1 is released. Go share the news with your friends. Uh, by the way, a few days ago I was speaking with my uh, colleague from Poland and he said that, well, he basically converted all his fleet to INAF from Betaflight. Why? Because uh, he was uh, he had some uh, cinema geek. He was filming something over water. He had to film something over water and decided that, well, I don't really trust the Betaflight uh, GPS rescue. I want to have something uh, safer. Uh, so I will try INAF. He just flashed INAF, uh, used the default 7-inch seven, um, seven preset and like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> Turns out that the default uh, INAF fly much better than the beta flight on the 7 inches. So I yeah, like, 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 cool, why not? Uh, because we can have stuff like that. Uh, all the time. So, so this is this is cool. Uh, share the good news. Uh, tell others that there is such a thing as INAF and it's actually flying pretty, pretty, pretty well. So uh, that's that. Uh, Artem doesn't see the release on GitHub. Uh, why? No, if you go here, uh, you see, it's there, it's there in published, uh, even the tag was created, so maybe you should refresh, uh, it should be there, the same for the INAF configurator. Uh, uh, you have to, by the way, restart configurator to see the firmware. Uh, now we have this thing. Uh, by the way, if I will go to the firmware flasher and choose anything... Oh, by the way, yeah, 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 we forgot. This is a uh, early version. Uh, that means that you have to select the show unstable releases. And only then you will have access to the uh, 700 RC1. You have to se select the show unstable releases. So that's that. If you won't select the show unstable releases, you will not see unstable versions. <laughs> and the INF7 is uh, unstable yet. A bidirectional D shot? No. And you know what? I. It's not really needed. It really, honestly, it flies great without the bidirectional D shot and the RPM filters. Uh, RPM filters are slightly overrated. They are overhyped. If everything is working great, then you do not really need the RPM filtering. Uh huh. It might sound strange, but that's my opinion on the topic. Um, you can have RPM filtering with the separate uh, ESC telemetry. Absolutely not a problem. Uh, but at one point after other filters were added to INAV, I like made an experiment and disabled this thing and went like, whoa, this is flying better than before. So like, there's no need for the bidirectional D-shot uh, because the gain is not really that big as people imagine if you have other ways of uh, filtering and uh, like, let's say, um, Pachyon post is there. Like, honestly, I, we can, like, I can show you. Look, I'm launching new incognito mode. GitHub, enough. We should go there. And there you go to the releases, and you see it's here. I have seven zero zero RC one. You just go to the assets, and here it is. The same goes for the INAF configurator. I'm even not logged in, by the way. So you go here, and you go to the releases. And there is, INAF Configurator 7 RC1. 
so it's there so it's there and uh, there should be absolutely not a problem of uh, using this at this moment okay uh, the official part is done now i think we can reserve some uh, fine i think we can reserve some fine like i don't know 25 20 minutes for the, all the questions uh, you have uh, about the inav 7 what you might expect so if you have any questions then uh, type them in the comments uh, and we, i will basically start replying them as we as we go now by scrolling up in the chat a little mm. And there. So uh, Bjorn Kulberg asks, uh, can you use the if file, diff file from INAF6? Yes, you can, but you will get errors. And we have uh, in, the, in the release notes, uh, there is the upgrade procedure and also a link to the wiki page of INAF that describes of how to in details do this process of uh, copying and migrating from INAFs different, between different versions of INAF. Uh, my advice is that yeah you can do it no problem uh, if you will see errors probably nothing wrong will happen however it's really a good idea to rely on the defaults uh, when upgrading between the major versions of the firmware so if you will just uh, go uh, from from start uh, i think it's a good idea also, it's also a good idea to recalibrate the accelerometer from time to time recalibrate the magnetometer from time to time usually a good get to, good good way to go uh, Kevin uh, Sevigin, does the S9 work on the SpeedDB F405 V3? I don't know, but we can check. Because why shouldn't it work? Let me quickly open the INAF code. Well, there's there's a thing. I don't remember every single line of code. I would like... It's a useless knowledge. So let's take a look at the target file for the SpeedDB F405 V3. And what do we know about S9? No, there is no S9. Uh, the LED uh, is assigned as the LED and you cannot use uh, S9 for anything else. However, um, you can have S1 to S4 assigned as motors and the S5 to S8 assigned as servos as you please and uh, that's fine. But you cannot use S9 for anything else as the LED. However, this is not the case for the F405 V3. So that's that. Mm, more point more beta prints uh, not really enough related is there a digital fpv camera system that are compatible with video switching between camera one and two like the analog system have i'm not aware of any uh, because uh, in this case uh, the camera and the vtx are tightly connected this is not open protocol so the vtx would have to be able to to run the switching and currently we do not have anything like that on the market at least nothing in the fpv uh, area of expertise so no such a thing does not uh, really exist and you cannot really use it so unfortunately unfortunately not really but yeah i uh, press the button so i press the button <laughs> um uh, Alessandro, maybe I missed something, but INAF does not include a motor rotation reverse panel. Correct? Yes, you cannot uh, change the motor rotation uh, direction from the INAF configurator itself. You have to go to the BL Heli configurator and uh, make the switch over there. Maybe it will change in the future. I don't know. Uh, is it that useful of the feature? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but you have to use basically the BL Heli configurator to use it. Iceman FPV, uh, is there Android version? No, there is no Android version. Maybe in the future, who knows? Um, Kevin, uh, would the INAF6 settings roll over or would we have to reconfigure? Uh, this is a question about reusing of the INAF6 div. You can start. You can start. I advise to set up from scratch. Uh, most probably you will get much better results done uh, before that um, Morton upshot easy to go from five to seven yeah it should be fine just follow the steps from a um, migration from five to six and then from six to seven but you should definitely migrate from INAF five to INAF seven uh, works much nicer works much better there's a lot of very uh, useful feature Andrew K what it's called a candidate because it's a candidate to be released officially uh it it probably has bugs and you have to find the bugs 
<laughs> this is why it's I, I was start talking about this at the very beginning of the live stream. This is something that we think that might work, but probably doesn't. Uh, so we are not adver ad ad advertising this thing as the final stable and blah, blah, blah. This is still a work in progress. We are not adding any new features. Now it's time for the community to run some testing and uh, help us to, well, to improve anything uh, and make this thing stable. Uh, Maxim doubt, uh, but INAF Sevel will allow to set up Tilt B Rotor VTOL. Uh, Tilt B Rotor VTOL is capable since the very beginning. Well, the B Rotor is was always possible, but uh, with the switch from the vertical to horizontal mode, yes, this is this is possible. The VTOL transition between two mixer profiles is uh, right now 100% uh, uh, possible. Cool cut RPM filters are like my fishing skills, overrated. Yeah, they are. Like, like on a, they are. Like, mm. um, what becomes uh, Virtuonauti? Uh, what becomes uh, our PID tuning from six uh, zero with Easy Tune? Do we need to tune from scratch? Uh, if you want to go to your tune from six point zero, you don't have to start with the Easy Tune uh, because there's not. It's just a new thing. Uh, however, if you are tuning for the first time your craft and you do not exactly know how it works and you do not really want to worry about every single setting over there, then it makes sense to go with the easy tune. By the way, in case of any problems uh, with the easy tune, uh, there is the Discord channel uh, in uh, INAF server uh, called the easy tune. <laughs> when you can share your thoughts about the, the process. Of course, the easy tune is a new thing. Uh, it might change. Uh, there might be problems with it. We might improve it. Uh, but yeah, should be fine. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, Winston Smith, a B shot, bidirectional D shot is not only for multi rotors but can be used to detect ESC or motor failures in twin uh, motor planes. Uh, yeah, assuming that we have a functionality on the Betaflight and INAF world that can utilize that. And right now we don't. And if you have BL Heli 32 ESC, then you can just wire the telemetry wire and it will work as well. But still, there's a problem on the Betaflight. <laughs> In general, on the multi with derivatives, which both INAF and Betaflight is, there is not right now a functionality that allows you to run any kind of the special functionality when one of the motor dies. If it dies, it dies. Like Mugabe said, if you're ugly, you're ugly. <laughs> if no, I will not try to speak like Mugabe. That's most probably not the best idea ever. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, what else, what else, what else? Mm. Uh, Born del Grammer. Okay, I hope no, I have not butchered your name too much. Uh, what about the cruise mode in terms of windy conditions? Will I have control back to initial track? I don't remember the exact answer, but it for sure controls heading. I'm not sure it also controls the track. It controls heading, so it will go the same way, but it doesn't guarantee to go back to the exactly the same uh, path. This is not uh, where we have it. Uh, Tachyon Post, uh, IC Fly F 405 did not made it to the into the targets. Uh, here's the problem. There is a document. I, I know I will be remitting, repeating myself. There is a document in the INAF repository, the main INAF repository, by the way. If we go over here and go to docs and policies and new hardware policy, this is the set of rules that any given target, any given board and any given uh, retailer, manufacturer, vendor, whatever of the flight controller has to follow to have their target added to INAF. The rules are very simple. Like, this is you, this is us, your responsibilities, our responsibilities. 
give us targets, give us, give us hardware samples. So in case everything goes wrong, we can test it. If the vendor, manufacturer, whatever, is interested in having its board supported, this is all that has to be done over here on this list. Very simple crap. Um, and some are following like this set of simple rules 100%. Uh, like there are companies that are always like 100% interested in having NF supports. Uh, the short list like Matex, PDB, GAPRC, uh, who else? Zs. Uh, I don't really like. If you if you have if you see any manufacturers board added to INF, that means they follow this procedure. But some companies are not interested. Some companies do not does not give a tiny rat's ass about INF. And if they don't, I don't. Uh, MD Tanvir, uh, no, I'm not Joshua Bardwell. <laughs> we kind of do look similar, but no. <laughs> we differ on many levels. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, for sure, 871. No, this is only the release candidate. It's not, well, it's official, but it's not final. It's still a test. For, can, it's still a test. If you want to test it, if you want to like, we would like you to test. We think it's safe, but still you should verify. Um, okay, Alessandro. Um, Alessandro noticed in the feature list that GPS is not upgrade now upgraded to ten hertz. Does it also uh, that does it depends also from the GPS module itself, or is it a software hacking? The GPS module has to be able to work with the Ublock Seven protocol. Uh, not all are capable of working with the Ublock Seven protocol, uh, but if you have M10s and M9s, uh, ten hertz uh, should work uh, no problem. Uh, you can test. Uh, if it if if it works, then it works. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, and there's nothing you can do. Uh, Artem, Voroho, my Cyrillic is like super outdated. Mm, is there some intent to make it possible to calibrate magnetometer inclination on flight using GPS? There is a bowling start when it comes to the magnetic anomaly zone. How do I use map and orientaries? So. Uh, that's the misconception. The calibration cannot be done using the heading from the GPS. Those are two different things. When calibrating a magnetometer, you calibrate for the magnetic fields. And the fact that you know the heading, actually crossover ground that GPS provides, doesn't know you can uh, run the calibration. It is possible, it would be possible, to uh, correct the error of the magnetometer readings with the GPS uh, crossover ground, but it's not really the same, and it's a completely, let's say, uh, different, uh, different, different subject. It's not possible right now. Uh, Michael Ecker, is there no DFU mode? Of course there is. Come on, let me show you. You see, I see we have. Com one, I take the board, I press the boot button. Tada! DFU. So it's there, it's working. Uh, Mosca. Uh, INAF 7 has a big chance of being the last release that will officially support F411s. Yes. Uh, the problem with F411s is twofold. The problem with F411 number one is that F411 has the limited flash. That means not too much of the code can fit into the, uh, the flash memory and be executed. Uh, it's the same as, for example, for the F722s. Uh, and we like fight in both cases with like what, what can go in and what cannot go in. Uh, but the biggest, uh, there, and there are still ways like to fight with this, like disable some feature here, make it not available there. Like, okay. Uh, however, the bigger problem with F411s is that they are not very fast. Uh, the computation of everything is kind of like taking quite a lot of them. But biggest problem of the F411s is that they have only two hardware serial ports. 
And that means with the modern FPV, if you want to have a GPS capable uh, craft with only two hardware serial ports, you have a problem. Because think of it like that. Uh, with digital FPV, you have to connect in INAV GPS, receiver, and the digital VTX. That gives you three devices. And you have only two hardware ports. Yes, and the software serial does not count. I think... I Honestly, I would disable the software serial. I would kill software serial. I would like to say, nope, we are not doing that anymore. Software serial sucks. And sucks big. Uh, so I would not be surprised if, like like Mosca said, the F411s and the uh, INAV7 is the last, last release, then we release them officially. Uh, starting from INAV8, there might be a big chance that we will just set all the F411 boards as uh, skip release, so you'll be able to build them if you really want to. But uh, for the INAF 9, uh, we will just remove them and they will be like long, long gone. But that's the reality. Let's call it like that. Um, yes, yes. And uh, the, the question about the speed of the, of the GPS, Mosca kind of replied, like, if, if it works, it works. And if you're ugly, you're ugly. <laughs> Grumpy old word. Moin. Um, props off uh, has a video on his channel uh, on to in it uh, rescue drone take two and also a short rescue drone toy drop. Well, okay, this is not really a question, so a completely different thing. Uh, now, uh, Michael Ecker for the Zadig. Um, not always you have to use Zadig. Uh, be very careful when using Zadig, especially when trying to override the, the drivers for the STM uh, VCP. For the DFU, yes, uh, but not for everything else. There are some, let's say, problems with those drivers. Mm. Border, uh, border grammar. Uh, any, I, any plans to use camera as a sensor with, for example, running OpenCV on ESP32 cam? No, no, no. This is too far. <laughs> this is absolutely too far. We will not play with that yet, though. No. Uh -uh. Looks amazing, but uh -uh. <laughs> uh, MJ, what's the name of the INAV7? Ferocious Falcon. That's the name. Ferocious Falcon. I will... Yeah, the falcon that is ferocious so it, it's a cool name i think it's okay oh no no it's an okay name i personally i think that ballistic buzzard was the best <laughs> ballistic buzzard was was kind of cool but ferocious falcon is also uh also quite nice so so that's that uh rc diesel rc uh it's not only I.O. on the F411s. It's I.O. plus the limited flash and the limited memory and the limited computational power. That there is just a Falcon. A Falcon man. Soku. Soku Millennium. Like the Millennium Falcon. Like okay, but we will not speak Polish. Uh, <laughs> it's Polish uh, today. Um... And I think I'm actually done at the moment. So INAV7 is officially live and it's fantastic and uh, and wonderful. Not only that, I also was flying today for the first time since the fire over there when the lipos exploded. That was something. On the other hand, the burning lipos gave me an opportunity to clean up my lipo storage. Uh, like half of the old lipos I, I got like well, discharged chopped and utilized because come on why do you have to have so much of the not use scrap and uh, and that's that um, maybe a quick update also what's gonna happen on the channel in the future because i think this is also kind of important um there will be a few videos about inf7 uh, coming along. I already have the video about the easy tuning. Uh, what else? Because I have a quite a, I have a few of the videos, so let me just uh, take a look. No, let's let's do it like that. So what's in the queue right now? 
There is a video about the flight controllers for beginners, uh, so that everything you would like to know if you're a beginner about the flight controller, this will be the video for you. But this is right now only in the production, uh, post-production. I recorded everything, but now I have to like chop, edit and add effects. And I miss the times when I was able to edit a video in like uh, one hour. That was fantastic. I was just saying like the constant flow of words with... Uh, uh, mm, <laughs> and then this thing was edited quickly in one hour and rendered right now right now if i record a 15 minute video that's at least uh, one hour of the raw material uh, that i then have to edit uh, and the editing of that takes six seven maybe even eight hours because you have to chop up at all the all the, all the transitions all, all the effects and and everything at some noise work on the audio work on the video it's taking so much time but it's fun i like editing videos it's like and i'm getting better and better at, at it by the way uh, for sure 871 what about f 722s uh, f 722s stay stay longer because they have more serial ports that's basically it uh, <laughs> would, would i say that the matic f7 std is the best enough flight controller for seven inches that was the best but years ago uh, the problem with that f7 uh, std i have it here by the way on my INAV development board i'm currently not using recently But this flight controller is no longer in production. You cannot buy it, and kind of, kind of, we moved forward. We moved forward with everything. And if you want to know what's my the best, the the flight controller I use the most, um, Matek H743, Matek H743, uh, Kakuti H7. Uh, SpeedyB F7 Mini, and there I have also one, uh, I think it's this F7, uh, V3, if I recall. And in terms of the airplanes, I don't remember what I have in terms of the airplanes. But the F7 STD, come on, it's like five years old flight controller. Uh, Mosca F745 is better than F722, exactly like the Mosca set. F745 it's much bigger fly, uh, MCU than F722, uh, mainly because it has more flash, one megabyte, and the F722 has only 500 kilobytes. So there is just more th stuff you can put over there. Uh, 148 uh, like a record in life. Yeah, I think so. That's but come on, it's a it's a big topic. <laughs> It's a big topic, so uh, what's like? So, um, props off. I gave you my list of the best. Uh, like the best of the best of the best. If, if I have an option, I have this privilege that I have a lot of flight controllers. So, uh, and I'm not really building that much recently. Uh, H7s, um, because they are expensive. <laughs> Uh, but I do think that in terms of the uh, reasonably priced flight controller right now, it's really hard to find something better than the PDB F405 V4. Honestly, like it's there, like hard to find something better, at least uh, in terms of features, because it seems to have everything. And of course, in terms of the price, because it's super affordable. Uh, for the like uh, less than 40 bucks for the flight controllers and with uh, ESC like 70 it's really hard to find something cheaper uh, that's uh, good quality and works yes there were problems with the F405 V3 and kind of PDB admitted that themselves that there were problems with the V3 because they released V4 where they fixed the biggest problems and the biggest problem was of course that two devices were connected to the same to the same uh, SPI bus and even when there were no problems with the buses itself uh, it was causing interference on the OSD and the SD card it was very picky in terms of the SD cards even more picky than usually and as the result well you know uh, grumpy old nerd would I consider F405 in general be bulletproof future proof yes 
uh, F405s will stay for long uh, because there is no problem either with the number of serial ports, and there is no problem with the uh, amount of flash, and it's not a problem with uh, amount of memory. Um, back in the days when we were still using SBUS and the smart port protocol for the FreeSky radios, back then there was a problem of F405s because F405s have no built-in serial inverters. That means you cannot directly connect your any inverted receiver like the uh, any SBUS or the smart port directly to the MCU. You have to use additional, uh, to the F405 at least, you have to use additional uh, onboard converters. That means if that the manufacturer said that SBUS will only work on the serial port 2, it will only work on the serial port 2 because only serial port 2 has the uh, inverter. And exactly the same was for the smart port. If they say the smart port has to be connected to this, it had to be connected to this because only this uh, had the built-in inverter or the soft serial or whatever. But like nobody is using SBUS anymore, at least in our hobby, like it's gone. Like FreeSky receivers are not really a thing anymore. Uh, even the FreeSky with the F-port, the latest generation of the F-port is not even inverted. So that's that. And you have the options to have inverted, not inverted. Uh, so it's not really it's not really happening uh, anymore. Uh, Express LRS, not inverted. Like everybody's using Express LRS. So, so the need to use F7s, which have uh, built-in inverters, is no longer there. So yes, F405 will stay for very, very, very long with us. Um, new Matek 405 Wing V2 is 45. Oh, that's a nice price, I have to say. Mm, that's a very nice. Uh, e Probanti, yes, F405, F4, SpeedDB F405, good, yes, yes, fast, good. F405s are good. Um, Skystars F7. Um, Skystars is recently making quite a lot of new hardware, if you ask me, and they are kind of never really like getting into this uh, mass media. Uh, maybe the marketing on the Skystars is not as good as the marketing on the SpeedDB. Let's be honest, like SpeedDB has a relatively good marketing. When they release a new flight controller, everybody knows that they released a new flight controller because they are just sending those. those. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people and then a lot of people know that the SpeedDB has a new flight controller and they are at least reasonably priced which also helps to share the news that uh, such a thing exists and so one more time this is a good thing uh, yeah Flywoo you're right Flywoo's uh, quite often are the F745s <laughs> but the problem with F745 is they are kind of expensive and there's usually not that, uh, not that market for them uh, Manufacturers are putting F745s, uh, were at least putting putting F745s uh, on their all-in-ones, was not because uh, they were cheaper or they wanted to make the better flight controller. The reason was that uh, this was one of the very few MCUs uh, from STM32 then, that back then were available in the BGA, BGA package. Uh, if we go into the STM STM32 F745 uh, not 6, 4, 745 BGA package uh, you could just buy this uh, in, probably will not find the material over there but you just could buy this in the BGA package and that meant that it was just smaller do I have anywhere a 745 S745 with the big BGA I don't think so so maybe I should just stop looking but that was the reason because you could just could, you were able to have them smaller <laughs> kind of useful when you are having the um uh, how it's called the all in one a small all in one oh by the way i got some hardware from gepercy uh they have a new gpss uh the packet just arrived today mm -hmm. Today on Tuesday, uh, I have not checked yet, but there are new GPSs. One is M1025 DQ, and the second is M1025 MI. I have no idea what those two last letters means, uh, but apparently they are M10 GPSs, 
and I think they differ slightly in size, as I think so. I think they have different magnetometers, and I also got, I think, new flight controllers from the Gap RC. Uh, something like that. Okay. This is called... I don't know how it's called yet. I had no time yet to look carefully at, at the content of this thing. And, and well, oh, I also got something like this. I will have to make a separate video uh, about this. This is, let's say, the Indie initiative. It's the Express LRS receiver that you put into your uh, USB so you can use your radio to play on the simulator. Yeah, it's a nice idea. It's called the Squid Stick. And I will have to find me a sim right now for the FPV drones. I was not flying with the sims for years. So maybe it's time to start again. Let's see how far the technology went. Uh, because when I was playing Velocidrone, uh, the flight model on the Velocidrone in like 2017, uh, it was not really that. So I will be having some fun with this thing. Um, Bordel Gramer, uh, is it possible to use sensor black box data for gyro flow stabilization? Yes. Uh, you can have a black box lock uh, exported from INAV and then imported into Gyroflow and the stabilization will run. Of course, you will have to synchronize them, uh, but it's doable, it's possible. Uh, oh, Slash 7, if you can give me a key for the uncrashed sim, why not? Come on. <sighs> if they give you something, take it. If they hit you, run. That's that's the thing. Uh, I think you know how to reach me. <laughs> you have my phone number. <laughs> uh, uh, Microten FPV. Will it be possible to configure INF wirelessly via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth with the Express LRS receiver? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, I mean, uh, if the Express LRS receiver has the MSP, well, not. No, this is wrong. Th this is wrong. There is this. It's possible. It's possible. I don't remember. No, this is GitHub uh, Express. I forgot the name. The Express LRS has right now something called the. I don't know if they merged it or not yet. Mm. How this thing was called? Not Express LRS Radar. Man, how was this thing called? This... Hmm, uh, airport. Yeah, yeah, this thing is called Airport. Basically, Airport uh, acts like a wireless uh, bidirectional serial port. Uh, so you can have the MSP tele MSP running on this on this thing. Uh, and this is not a problem. You just put two, uh, two receivers on your uh, on your drone. One is a receiver. Second one is the relay for the airport. And uh, voila, you can configure everything. Express LRS. LR, LR, uh, yes, uh, Mosca airport is merged, and I, I have to I have to buy an Express LRS receiver to to finally try the airport. Um, maybe during the winter, maybe during the winter. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Mm. Do we have anything else? Oh, I think we will slowly ending for today because, well, High Enough 7 is live, which is fantastic. Uh, we answered some questions, we shared some thoughts. So thank you very much. Uh, the next live stream will be... I have no idea when. Uh, most probably next week we're gonna have another build stream because I still want to finish the Krakel uh, Discover airplane and I still have some work uh, on this thing. So that's gonna happen to, uh, for sure. Uh, and then maybe next week we're gonna have uh, another Saturday night live Saturday night live stream. Uh, but I will have to find a few topics that we're gonna talk about, and hopefully those will be like good things. And bugs. No, we will not talking about bugs. Uh, I, I'm a software developer. I have enough of the bugs at work. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this was the FPU University. I'm Pavel Spichalski. Thank you very much for watching. You know the drill. I, I like how I end videos now. This is like, like super like. Here's the next video you should watch in the meantime. <laughs>
<laughs> I like what I did. And by the way, from time to time, I'm watching the videos, old videos I was recording. Like, man, okay, we are not running yet. No, no, no run, no run. Let, let me quickly show you something. <laughs> this is like fuck. Really, I was recording videos like that. <laughs> it's like super crazy. Um, I think this will be a good example of that. Uh, view on YouTube. Look how. Look how nice of the opening I had. Hi and welcome to the workshop. Today, one more time, something slightly different okay. than usually on this channel. Uh, no electronics. Uh, uh, no uh, for the motors, for the first like. No at all. Uh, I will be talking about how to make things. Uh, Four minutes. I was only talking. Oh, I was not showing anything. I was only talking. Come on, like. Come on, come on, come on. And the amazing thing that there is a, the YouTube analytics show you this graph, which like show you the drop off when people are dropping off. In the first 30 seconds, like half of the viewers like, screw this guy. <laughs> what the hell is he even doing over there? And then only when I was actually showing something, how to laminate this thing where people were joining again. So, ah! uh, latest videos uh, have much nicer retention <laughs> graph. Not super cool, uh, but usually there is not a drop like this over here. So ah, but this video took me like half an hour to uh, edit. Now I still have to slow up the PC to work with everything. So uh, one more time, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, like always, happy flying! Ciao.